Oh, boom, we're here. Yeah, the boom is back, everybody. Thanks for asking for that to come back. It makes me so happy in my heart, which is why I'm going to give away a program today. I know I give them away all the time, but I'm going to give away another one today. We're so giving. They're flying off the shelf. Math's strong. What a popular, awesome program. Builds lots of muscle. That's the free program we're giving away today. Here's what you got to do to win that program. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you get free access to Map Strong. Oh, one more thing before we start this awesome show, and I promise this show is amazing. Two programs are on sale right now, 50% off. So Maps Performance and Maps Suspension, both 50% off. By the way, this promotion ends this month, so the month is kind of ending soon, so you might want to act now if you're interested. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just make sure you use the code September 50. That's September 50, no space, for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Yee-hoo. Ready, Doug? Got everything going? Everything's We're going on my end. Do it. Perfect. Andrew? Oh, you can't fix that. You can't fix ugly, dude. Yeah. <laughs> didn't didn't think that joke was coming out. Never guessed not that enough joke, filters. Huh? Uh, got a face for radio, but <laughs> <laughs> what other fucking put the, the fish yeah. lens yeah. on there. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's a fat fuck, you guys. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. Fat and ugly. Stop it. I was like, I've heard it all, dude. Yeah. I've heard it all. <laughs> That's not true. That's Why? jealous people talk like that. I like it. Hey, so uh I was reading a lot this weekend about um frequency of training, a lot of studies on frequency we talked about this a lot on the podcast right yeah like what's the ideal amount of frequency for muscle building that stuff so the most of the studies that get quoted on frequency will say something like training body parts two or three days a week tends to build more muscle than training body parts once a week so long as the volume is controlled so everything's controlled exercise is controlled right two days a week three days a week probably better but you know that studies show that more frequency than that is even better for strength you guys know that? No, I thought it fall. I thought it. I actually thought that three was on the upper end, and it's actually the sweeter spot is two for hypertrophy. Uh, but the studies do trend higher or better for strength gains for even more frequency. Well, that makes sense just for the yeah. the, the argument that we make for practicing. Practice, and you yeah. see yes. what strength Olympic athletes are doing their whatever their lift is. You know, at least four or five times in the week. Exactly. So it's really like a, a skill thing, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. they don't necessarily build more muscle. Although I'll argue this, uh, doing cycles like that, uh, I would say in the long term probably would build more muscle, right? Because you're you're able to squeeze out more from each of those those high skill exercises. You got to make sure the intensity you bring it down, which is really hard to do for per people. That's the big imagine one. if you're training something four or five times. You know how much you have to back off the intensity. Like at least three of those three of those workouts are really easy. Th three right. of them are pure skill focused. Yeah, yeah. And where you're probably moving fifty percent of your load or, or your your max load or less. So. Yeah. So let's say and I, and this really applies best to high skill compound lifts. So on top of not only having to manipulate the intensity, we're talking about like squats and presses and rows. Like it doesn't really make a difference or too much of a benefit to do like isolation exercises that often. What, what, was, what was that study that I think you shared this before on the podcast a long time ago was uh, the, uh, the percentage that a like a uh, Olympic lifter can get out of their – it's like oh, yeah. they can get up to like 98% or yeah, something like that. So I don't remember the term was, but we all have like a capacity, right? Uh, and what's lim what limits our capacity for power output or strength mm. is our central nervous system, which is governed by – Largely, like all these things that tell it that thing, it's either safe Golgi complex. or not safe, right? So let's say your maximum, absolute maximum uh, capacity to lift off the ground is 500 pounds, right? You're not going to be able to lift 500 pounds because there's your body's going to prevent you from going to your absolute max to prevent you from hurting yourself. But Olympic athletes are so, and the reason why they're such good uh, examples is when you guys look at, and you know, no disrespect to Olympic athletes, they're all muscular, they look really good. But when you look at the weight that they lift, it almost never matches. It doesn't make sense. No, you got like 150-pound like athletes sense. that are lifting weights that a 230-pound yeah. bodybuilder 
couldn't even move and they don't look like bodybuilders. They just kind of look athletic and it's because they can maximize that power output. Yeah. So much. At the right time too. Yeah. So they're very efficient with the energy output. So it's like, you know, you get that first amount that you really need to drive and then you're just in putting yourself in better position to catch. Yeah. And then the technique of it is at the highest point. Well, the reason why I was asking was, do you have any idea what that is for the general population? Uh, so I, if a, an Olympic lifter can squeeze out, say 98%. Uh, you oh, know, I, I would bet it's closer to 50 I bet it was, it's like way low. So imagine if that's true, then doing things like practicing four or five days a week, backing off intensity, you just increasing your capacity by 10% could be a huge difference. Totally. And then this is, of course, I brought this up before the stories of like the mom that, you know, lifts the burning car off their kid and everybody's like, super mom. Yeah. Like, how did she do that? Right. I think under extreme duress it probably overrides your your cns yeah your governing is just yeah you just sort of override the whole system yeah speaking of mom stuff i have a funny you just reminded me of a funny mom uh story that just just literally happened like two days ago with max so mac like new stuff is happening right now right like so he's learning to switch on and off the lights and he's trying to babble and say new words when one of the things that when we get home so like or when i get home from work he gets all excited. He comes running up to me and he'll like grab my hand. And then that's like our time for like the next, you know, four hours or so where just him and I are playing. And, and Katrina will sometimes come over and interact when we're doing stuff like that. And he takes me upstairs. This is like the first time this has ever happened. He takes me upstairs and he wants to sit on his like his little beanbag thing in his room and we're reading. And so we're up there for like 20 minutes or so. And then Katrina decides to come in because she has to she wants to bring up something to do with work. I can't remember. She was talking actually to one of you guys. And she needed to run something by me. And so I'm in there. He's like next to me and we're like reading. And then she comes in and and I'm like multitasking. I'm kind of reading to him, but then I'm also talking. Mm -hmm. And so she's sitting on the the rocking chair. I'm down the beanbag and he gets up and he walks over to her and he grabs her hand and she gets all, oh, cute. He wants us to, and he takes her and he walks her out the door and then closes the door (laughs) behind her and then comes over and then sits down to go be with me. It was the funniest shit ever, dude. He literally was, he was getting irritated Uh, because she was taking our time and was trying to, trying to get in between us talking. And she thought, she so thought he was going to go grab her and go sit her next to us and we could all read together as a family. He literally walked her out the door. And at first, she didn't at know. Least like, he was nice about it. Well, yeah. at first she thought like, oh, he's going to take me somewhere else that I want to go. He or wants s- to hang out with mom. She walks out. He <laughs> lets go of her head, walks in, then closes the door behind her and comes back in. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> I fucking died, yeah. dude. I thought, yeah. that he had done something like that. Yeah, I thought that yeah, was Aurelius so funny. Yeah, Aurelius will, if, uh, if Jessica's nursing him, he likes it to be quiet. But if she's talking to me, me or anybody while she's nursing him, he'll reach up and put his hand on her mouth. Like, yeah. like to make her stop, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> make her mouth stop moving. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. Kids are hilarious Bunch like that. Oh, yeah, dude. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, so, do you guys weird. have a good weekend? Uh, I mean, uh, they're all sick, man. Oh, yeah. My, I, I, you know, I, when it's we, not the vid, though. You guys all did the No, same no, thing. no, no. It's just that cold that you and I caught when we went out to Arizona. It, and it wasn't that bad. Super, yeah. But no. I, sh- you know, because it wasn't that bad, I was still interacting with Katrina and Max, and I should have kind of stayed away because they both have it worse than me now. Mm. So this whole weekend, I had the, the two sickies. He was, and he, poor guy, he can't, like when he lays down, he can't breathe really well. So I've got the humidifier and everything oh, really? over him, and he still can't really breathe. That sucks. Is his sleep messed up? Oh, yeah. So the last like four nights, I've not been getting like Harley. He, Gets up and comes running in our room right now at like oh, yeah one two that's o'clock the worst in the dude yeah. dude speaking of kids did you guys see the study on BMI uh, rates and uh, how they've changed so BMI right body mass index it kind of measures the, the the average weight of adults or kids or whatever they've and, updated this useless metric well it's not well yes okay so it's not completely useless because it's, it is a general metric and if it goes up generally I think we could assume. People aren't building a ton of, mu- ton of muscle <laughs> across. Yeah, I mean, for yeah. your average, like that's what like, I mean. Yeah. So they 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 track BMI, and uh, it's been steadily increasing over the last few decades. Right, people are getting heavier and heavier, mm-hmm. and again, it's probably not because everybody's building more muscle, and they've been tracking it with kids for a while. During the when the lockdowns first started and the pandemic first started, the rate of BMI index increase among children, the rate of increase doubled. So it sped up twice as fast during that whole period of time. Wow, so dang. yes, and you know this really points to sometimes when we when we when we react to things and we make decisions, we don't consider any potential unintended consequences. We only think of one metric, and we don't consider all these other 
potential mm-hmm. metrics. Like what could that what could that potentially mean for these kids? Because we know that that overweight and obese kids, I think they have a seventy or eighty percent chance of being overweight and obese adults, and then what that means, right? So mm-hmm. what could this you know, think about the unintended consequence of all these kids not going anywhere, staying at home, not being around people. Not oh, school. I mean, we experienced this already. Just like, I mean, I just started to see some bit of an encouraging uh, energy out there with kids coming back into sports and like getting outside and doing things. But for the longest time, like, you know, the parents weren't having their kids out there playing. They're pulling them from teams. And it's been the hardest thing ever to just get consistency of kids going to practice and everything. What do you guys, what do you guys think is going to be the worst group that gets affected by this? Meaning like what age group, right? Well, no, that's too fucking general kids. Oh, that's under 17. No, I mean like, so I'm noticing like between my nieces and nephews and my, my brothers and sister, like all these different age groups like that, what what period of school, so kids, we know kids, obviously, I don't think adults are going to f- feel the impact as much as kids are going to feel the impact. But if you're talking about zero to 17 years old, at what grade do you think is going to be the most impactful to actually sit an entire year or almost two years out completely? So I don't think it, as much as it would suck to be a uh, junior in high school and miss out on junior and senior year, I don't think the development stuff skills are not as going to be hindered as much oh, as somebody who's like, Oh, I do. So, so compared I, to somebody who's like six, yeah. Oh, I don't yeah, think I, so. No, here's why I do. The, the The things that you develop at six are also very important, right? You start to learn certain social cues. Most important. You learn you, you learn facial expressions. Yeah. Uh, maybe more fundamental. But think about junior high and high school. You're really learning complex, you know, social interactions. This is when you learn. You know, you're communicating with the opposite sex. You're with your groups. You understand, you know, group politics and stuff like that. And they are not seeing each other's faces. You know how big of a deal that is? Not reading someone's facial expressions. Of course. And, able, and then those parts of the brain at some point are not as plastic. Yeah, but I would make that that is more important for the five to seven year old than the junior higher. I mean, like, maybe. Of course. I, I mean, those are the most malleable years for your brain for a child. So you, here's why they I are developing those things. The point you're making right now, I would think that a five to a seven year old will be affected more than a junior high. So would. here's why I would say maybe not, because the impact that parents have and closer uh, family have on young children is higher than peers. When you become a, when you go into junior high or high school, the impact that your peers have on your development is much higher than your parents. So in other words, if your six-year-old is at home most of the time, they're going to miss out some stuff, but they're with mom and dad. They're not wearing masks at home and stuff like that. When you're in junior high and high school, like a lot of your development comes from your peers. It's not necessarily your parents and your brothers and sisters like it was when you were a kid. So you're missing that completely because you're not around. Oh, think about when you were like when I was in eighth grade. It, it was like a, like if I didn't have friends and go out and those social and it was just my parents all the time. It's like that could be very damaging. Well, I mean, between but- the four of us, I mean, we've got all the way from high school all the way down to two years old and almost every two-year yeah. gap or so between there. What do you see between your two boys who it's affected the most? Uh, definitely my youngest. I mean, he's... and it's Everett's mainly- how old right now? How old Everett? Eight. Eight? Yeah, so it's mainly because of his friend's parents, like, not being as comfortable uh, you know, with them interacting and stuff. And so again, it's just, it varies, but, um, it, his lack of, of engagement with and being able to hang out with his friends has been like it really tough. Yeah. Five to seven is my theory. That's, and it's just for that exact reason that this is the most malleable time for the brain and you're putting all that stuff together. So I think five to seven will, I mean, we're, we're speculating. It's just different. Of course. Like the way I would, the way I would imagine it, if my six year old was having challenges, I feel like I could influence them more effectively than a kid could with a 13 year old. I mean, they're showing in, in, you know, they're showing depression and suicide and anxiety rates exploding mm-hmm. among teenagers, which is, that's when shit happens anyway. That's when you start to feel that kind of stuff anyway. Yeah. They're already angst as fuck. So yeah. But you're not going to mom and dad Yeah, and mom and dad isn't making a big, de- a big difference. Yeah, I do. I'll tell you what. So now, so now my kids are back in school, right? So, and my son is 16. My daughter is about to turn 12. And now they're in school and events are starting to happen. I mean, they're still wearing masks, but they're around friends. The difference in them is like, it's night and day. It's crazy. It's insane. My, we, they had a, the, the school festival for my daughter's school that they do every year where they have like the big, by the way, it's hilarious. They do like the big Ferris wheel and the, you know, the rides and stuff. Those things, mm-hmm. they put them up in like an hour. I don't know how safe those things are, by the way. <laughs> I'm looking at <laughs> oh, My holy shit. But anyway, she, it's like a big deal. 
she went with her friend. Now, my daughter, you know, last year or a year and a half, it was very different. Like now all of a sudden she's with her friends and I'm, and I'm seeing her develop so much faster and just, it's like, boy, was that a tough time not being around people. So do you think junior high then? Is that what you're, you're speculating it's on? It's hard to say. I would say. Well, I know it's hard to say. I, I would say. Pro- data support I would say probably probably. junior high. I think it's probably the most formative. Yeah. You think when? Junior high. Yeah. Junior yeah. high. Well, I'm counting that because like Ethan's now like in sixth grade, which is lumped into yeah. the whole junior high yeah. thing. And it's, it's like. Oh, let's grow all the way up now. It's like just we're going to throw the kitchen sink at you in terms of yeah. like, you know, everybody's ideas and I'm just like, ah. Like, like it's it's just so much at once. Like he he wants to like ask me a million questions a day now of all these yeah. different Yeah, things I would imagine I mean that's got to be just a, normally one of the biggest transitions for a kid, right? Elementary going to junior high or middle school. Yeah, that's I a mean, big one. Yeah, elementary you're hanging out with kids all the way from first grade to what? Fifth oh, it's or whatever it's that. super innocent. Yeah. You make the leap to 6 7 8 elementary. all of a sudden like it's like, you know, big kids and you're the yeah. young kid coming well, in. Well, think so. about it this way. How important was your social s- circle? with friends when you were in third grade versus when you were in eighth grade. Yeah, but okay, to that point though, it was starting to be developed though in fifth and sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And if you miss those developmental ages, that would potentially impact. Whereas if you were somebody who went fifth, sixth, seventh, you started to already develop that, oh, you missed two years. Oh, that it's painful for them or it's difficult, but to get back into the swing of things probably would be easier than somebody who misses the year or two years yeah, when it's know. when it when you know, first we're developed see it. that. We'll know. We'll see the Oh, I know. Eventually. That's why it's fun to speculate yeah. on this because I, I mean I'm already seeing different things, like I said, I'm, between my nieces and nephews and noticing all the different ages and like who's been like I have my old like my niece who has two younger siblings. And she is uh, six years old, and uh, she looks like she was hurt the most. But she's also the oldest in the in the group of kids with three kids. The two that were younger, they're learning at home from the oldest one, yeah. so they didn't really feel like I didn't feel like they really dropped off that much. Where she, I felt like dropped off a, a lot. Dude, so you want to know what's weird? So here's what's trippy: is that like my son went to go hang out with his friends, and they were at uh, Santana Row, which is outdoor. So this is an outdoor kind of mall area. And then after that, they walked to a couple stores and stuff. Anyway, when I went to pick them up, they weren't even in an area that was required to be masks, but they were outside and all the kids had their masks on. So when I picked up my son, I was like, why did you guys have your, your masks on when you guys were hanging out over here or whatever? And he's like, well, it's, it's not a big deal. It's like, it's kind of more comfortable. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> you're, you're, more comfortable? You're, they're, you know why? Because I think they feel anxious taking them off around yeah. each other because they're never... They're always covering. Think about like this much of your face. Well, everybody how else much, is pressure. Like, well, not not know, just that. How much of your them. this whole part of your face? How much of that communicates what you feel yeah. and your emotions and stuff? So now you're covered. It's like wearing sunglasses. You, you ever see? Yeah. You well, ever see people wear sunglasses to hide their emotions? Do you, do yeah. you think then that uh, you know at least the the upside of that is they'll be better at poker? Yeah. <laughs> sure. yeah, or worse, right. yeah. can't read the guy's a bunch face of kids at all. That are like really <laughs> good at poker. List of all the yeah. things that fucked yeah. you up, but hey, you might be better at poker. Bunch of yeah. Dan Bilzerians out there, <laughs> yeah. you know, or, a, a, or worse, that. you're like, what's what's he doing with his face over? That's a smile. Yeah. Oh, that's, I don't know what that. <laughs> I've never seen one of those before, <laughs> except for movies. That's know. interesting that they would positive. that they would opt to do that. But that does make sense, especially at that age too, when you're a kid. Oh, hurts my heart, dude. It does because I explained to him. I'm like, do you know how important it is to see each other's? And he doesn't know. It's not a big deal. Who cares? You know, whatever. Because to him, it's like whatever. Yes, but to, I, I see it. I'm like, no, dude. You need to be able to see each other's faces and yeah. read each other's. Oh, wow. Like that part of your brain. It's, you know, well, dude, I'll tell you what, like working with these kids in high school and like just the in the sports realm, it's been so interesting to kind of see the dynamic. It's like these kids are so nice, you know, and it's just like, like, where's your anger button? You know, <laughs> <laughs> where is that hatred inside you? Like <laughs> nobody has it, dude. I'm like, you try and find it because like <laughs> football's a sport you need. You need it. It's an outlet. It's like you need to like get some angst. You need some like anger. Are they like, like sorry? Use it. I didn't mean like, to hit you oh. so hard. <laughs> like I don't know, coach. Hey, you, you know, guys are like, winning. I saw you won again. We won. Yeah, we're we're two and oh. Two and I mean, we we missed our first two games because of like stuff, but yeah, we so we won this weekend. Uh, but it seriously has been just like anxiety city for me because like we just we're we're so thin personnel wise. We have like I have like sophomores in there, you know. We we just have like we're patching people together, trying to put the winning strategy together. But it's like it, nobody really uh, st- you know stands completely out on their own. But wow. like everybody's working together so hard oh, and like good. fighting. But and these kids like aren't used to being playing somewhat injured. I'm like, dude. 
you're you play injured every game. Like that's what football is. <laughs> yeah. You well, know, like his kid comes over, he's like, I'm bleeding, coach. I'm like, oh, do we need to have the talk? <laughs> <laughs> you know, do we need do we need to it's it's just like one of those things that they're just unfamiliar with. Could, you, could you play a game of football and not hurt something? I feel like that's impossible. No. It's just like it's boxing or it's like it's anything where you have combat, like physical combat yeah. with, with like and you're literally like assaulting each other. Like it's you're gonna be hurt. Now are, because they've played two games, they've won together, obviously it sounds like they're playing well together are they starting to gel and become like a team oh yeah no that's that's literally the the uh thing that's been keeping everything working is just that they all have this belief system that is now they're all bought in uh and so that just sort of clicked uh after that first game was like definitive of well we can do this like it's they have the winning mentality but it's just like uh, I mean, there's lots of like very new green players out there that have no like I'm seriously like they'll get like some 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 bumper bruise and then like you can't find them and you're like where's so and so you're trying to like grab I grab the player and just threw him out in the field like you're out there you know <laughs> like they're always just trying to like like figure out like where to hide like, <laughs> where is everybody you know you're just, everybody's looking for have, somebody hey, every have play you, have you had to deal with uh like social media do you have to like regulate like with kids like actually like walking over their phone and actually checking their shit um not or do you guys have rules like no, no nobody nobody brings any of that at practice but like they do have it for like displaying like you know they'll, they'll post pictures or video clips to to kind of like advertise the team, which is a new thing. Which I get it. They as in the players, or they as in the, the school. The players, uh, uh, you know. And so um, there's there. I think there is a school Instagram or something of uh, the football team, but you um, think? I haven't been on it. Okay, I, I don't coach. even follow them. So, <laughs> hey, you know. Hey, you you were telling me a story about how you. Put on either you put on pads or when you started going like letting them hit you. Yeah. <laughs> and so Justin comes in, yeah. I'm working out. Yeah. And he's like, he's strutting. You know, he's walking in like, you know, sometimes Justin gets that walk and like, oh, yeah. what happened, yeah. dude? Like they don't even know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Loser, they don't even. And he's know like, I, I was, uh, I was letting the kids come at me the other day. And he's like, it felt good to, to show uh, them what time it is. <laughs> like what? Yeah. Dude? Tough, toughest kid on the team. You know, he's walking around like a boss and, and like I, I was low on the scout defense. I kind of managed that to give our offense a look and uh, we didn't have like a, an end. And so I was like, whatever, I'll just like fill in, you know? <sighs> and he's like our, our stud uh, tackle. And so he's just like coming down to block me. And I'm just like, Hey, I'm going to beat you on this play. And he's just like, no, I'm going to get you. And like, and so I, I pulled one of my old like swim moves real fast and then like threw him on the ground. And then <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Flexing like, on these dude, little I'm 41 kids, years dude. old, dude. Where are you at? Yeah. Taunting and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you, dude? You're at the peak of your physical prowess. Oh, my God. Hey, so, so that one felt good. But then the, the, I was doing this drill with the running backs, and I forgot I didn't have a helmet on. And I went to come up and give him a look, and he kept going. And we headbutt. He got right on my chin. Ooh. And I had this like serious welt on my face for a couple days. Like it split you open. Yeah. Were you guys now stupid. the two wins? Were you supposed to win these, or is this a, was this a big big win? What, what would you say? I mean, I honestly, I I'm like we won. Like I I didn't think a, a whole lot about. Like, well, what was the record last year before you got there? Do you know? Uh, I mean, we won a few games. I think it was like I think it was like uh, like a fifty. Oh, okay, five hundred. Five hundred kind of season, but. Um, yeah, there weren't. There was a lot of expectations. We actually moved down in uh, divisions, uh, so our real test is like next week because we get into league. But these were these were tough teams. They're a lot tougher than they were on film. Oh, I thought this was was league. I thought you were two and zero league. This isn't league yet. This is still preseason. Oh, so that okay. was our last preseason game. Hey, so when you when you did that tackle drill with the kids, were they different afterwards? Because I, I I've had experiences like that with like you with know what? judo what? coaches oh, okay. or jujitsu coaches. Or I actually had a teacher. I had a math teacher. I don't know if I told you guys this story once. I used to cut class all the time, and I would show up and take the test, and I'd get a C. I'd always get 70% or 70 whatever, and I was happy with that. Like, whatever, I don't give a shit. Yeah. You know, typical entrepreneur. I'll yeah. pass. And he, this teacher was, he was one of the wrestling coaches, kind of a big guy, and him and I would talk about working out sometimes. And he was kind of cool, and he would tell me like, Sal, you got to show up to class, dude. And I'd be like, why? I get, you know, I, I'm passing your class. So in, in the whole front of the class, he called me out. And he goes, I tell you what, Sal. He goes, if you can come up here and beat me in arm wrestling, 
I'll never ask you to class again. You'll just have to come take the test. But yeah. if I beat you, you have to give me your word that you'll show up every day. And I'm like, I'll crush this old man. And I'd never lost at this point in arm wrestling. I think I was like a junior in high school. So in front of the whole class, he beat me. And I had to show up. And, but the respect that I had for this guy. Old man strength. Afterwards, you know, I was like, all no, right. That's gotta- totally what it is. Like if if I would have not done that, like, that would have been bad. I would have I would have lost that credibility. You know, there's something there. Like you have to kind of earn that. And, and as much as you want to just talk about the good old days or whatever like you know they want to know you're still relevant have yeah. you guys ever seen that so like a leadership role dude yeah i mean you got you got to be able to show, show them i remember back when we all i mean we all work for the same company I remember when you'd work for a manager that would be managing a staff and then writing people up or you're getting pissed off at them because they didn't write a certain amount of revenue it's like i've never even seen you do that like let me show you yeah i mean you if you if you don't do that then i feel like you don't get that the same level of respect than if they see that you can do their job yeah. as good as they can or better right? you guys ever watch yeah. that video it was like this kind of old squat, uh, kind of slightly overweight boxing coach. And he puts on gloves and he goes toe to toe with, I guess, one of these amateur boxers and like, like lights them up. Yes. And this old guy, like you looked at it, you look at him. You've never, I think you shared that with us. Oh my God. It's hilarious. Cause he put a whooping on that kid. Did you guys see that? Uh, Steffi Cohen and, Oh yeah. uh, What happened? She, uh, hers went to a draw. And then oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the other the Bjorn big Bjorn? Yeah, uh, yeah, Bjorn. Bjorn, Bjorn, Bjorn yeah, he won. He won his. I didn't did. watch them. I just saw clips, highlights, and the this post celebrity yeah, he boxing got things. shredded. Yeah, he looks yeah. crazy. Did you see the difference? He's of still it? massive. The mountain. Did you see though? Yeah. Oh man, his. Yeah. I think it's like a hundred pounds, right? It's like he he lost a ton of weight. Insane. So this celebrity boxing thing, or this, Bro, actually, this is big, the future. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, look at Steffi Cohen has like a million followers now, right? So mm-hmm. you get a person who's got a million followers fighting somebody who else has got a million. Like, I don't know what the what the going number is for like a lot of pay per views. What makes it like really profitable or not? But I imagine if you got two people that have different audiences, each with a million people, the chances of you getting at least fifty thousand buys has got to be pretty high, yeah. right? And yeah. Do the math on. I, that. I mean, rivalries are always fun. Like, at what point do you think it's going to be like CEOs? Well, like, it's getting sad. <laughs> Elon Musk versus TikTok. Did you, TikTok, see, the, like did you see the news that came out on Riddick Bow? No, what? Oh yeah. So because it's getting so popular, and this is where it's this is what I'm curious about, right? Because we talked about this with uh, Evander Holyfield, yeah, right? Because uh, yeah. that was a dud. That that everybody. Oof. Well, and and take a look. Maybe Doug, you can you can look this up so they can see like a picture of uh, Riddick Bowe wants to fight again. And how old is he? He's like 58 or 59. Name I haven't heard. And he looks ever. terrible. Like he doesn't even look like he's exercised in probably two decades. He's so out of shape. So this is what I think is going to be is kind of scary is anybody and everybody who had a name before is going to start coming out of retirement because they're going to feel like shit. Even <laughs> my old ass could, could hang with this young kid who thinks he's people need tough. To, people need to understand. There he is. No, nice. but look for Did you look up Riddick Bowe wants to fight again? Oh, well, he's a, he's a big boy in that picture right there, too. Dude, get George Foreman out again. Well, Foreman became he, he, he became champion at 40. How old was he? 44? Why are we in images? Yeah, you got to be you, get pe- just in a news. People need to realize that a bo- of somebody who boxed professionally and oh, then who's right 58, there, it's not like a normal 58 year old. That's yeah. that, that you're a lot older because of the damage that you've gone through. Have you guys seen the life expectancy of these athletes? It's not very good. Oh yes, because of the beatdowns that they go. Yeah. Well, football well, is what football What's alignment 56 is six or something. Yeah, like that? Football is super low, insane, right? Yeah, like ten years yeah. after. Or hey, speak, speaking of celebrities, earlier I mentioned Elon Musk. Did you see what got approved on the new Tesla that they're going to start pursuing? No. no. <laughs> okay, this single-handedly could be the coolest thing ever put on a car ever. The really? coolest thing ever. Laser beam windshield wipers. <laughs> <laughs> I what? swear to God. What the hell? It it's probably sounds a lot cooler than what it really is. Laser it beam. <laughs> no, it's literally what it is. Yeah. There, literally, it will pick up if there's debris or yeah. water on your windshield, and lasers yeah. <laughs> will come out yeah. and evaporate you it or blast it off. Sharks with lasers of your fucking windshield. What? Wow. Yes, dude. How sick would that be? You're driving. Okay, wait a second. So it's it, it's so it's before the rain hits the wind. Is it, I don't understand. No, if so, it'll, the sensor's on the windshield. Okay. So if it picks up water or debris, rain, the laser will f- evaporate it off or get rid of it on your windshield. Oh, off the windshield. Yes. Yeah, but that okay. So there's no way it works like that under rain conditions, right? 
That's like exactly it, what it's supposed to do. So you're telling me that it'd be, it's be constantly raining and these lasers, lasers are just bzz, 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 heating up your windshield and shit coming off. Yeah, that's 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 what that's what? exactly what I'm saying. I want to see a video. Yeah, no, of this. I'm like, I, I don't now here's, picture this because it doesn't make any sense. Now here's what I was thinking. Let's say like a bird or something lands on you. <laughs> Can you turn them out like you could with the uh, you know the windshield wash? Have you ever done that yeah. to people and you squirt them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Point at the on, car in front of you. Never done this that. This can't. This can't. That can't be. I'm still stuck you on laser them. Yeah, I'm pull still it up, stuck on, I'm, st- I'm stuck on the 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 idea that this thing is going to basically. So uh, would you not need windshield wipers anymore? That is the windshield wiper. It it's lasers. I mean, this is this is from what I've read in this article. Tell me it's not the coolest thing you ever I mean, if life. that is true, then it's, yeah, it's like out of a comic book. I would buy one just for that. Just, I want lasers on my car. I mean, I've yes. always wanted, my I mean, whole life. The answer is yes. Have you heard of this, Doug? I have not. No. My whole life, I wanted lasers on my car. <laughs> well, we, hey, what did you think about the yeah, new uh, Escalade that, that we wrote in last week? Uh, well, that, what do you mean? The new Escalade, the Cadillac Escalade. That's what oh, yeah, up. very nice. Very yeah, nice that, car. those things, the new, the brand new Escalade is crazy how nice oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the yeah, whole, whole front, like awesome. the whole front dash is like all TV monitor. See, there it is. Huh. Te- Tesla patents new wipers. So this is on a video. Uh, let's see if we can fast forward. Anyway, maybe Doug can pull no, up No, I want to see this. I want to see this. Lasers thing. clean the windshield, bro. That's crazy to me. Well, it better not be like it's when they tried to say shit. All I see, okay. see, I was shooting lasers. <laughs> will, the, not damage the, eye, will not damage eyes. Oh yeah, that's true. I wonder. That's I didn't think of that. If it's a hits you in the eye or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that does. That's just. I wonder if it's going to like assist the wipers. No, and they they'll are be the both. Or uh, yeah, or there's no windshield wipers and it's just lasers. That's what I read. Individually, in the just zap. Whatever's coming at it, dude. I swear to God, I would. Adam's buy not buying. This. I'm not. No, I'm just so. I it's mean, that's too out there. You're the science skeptic. Well, ju- yeah. well, just think of like I'm trying to picture like a She's storming all- rain. Like these lasers are getting every raindrop before it hits your windshield. Yeah. Not, I not it works no, no, no. Once it hits your windshield, blast it off. Yeah. Or it, that. It's, it's Either hit- one sounds crazy to me. No, no. Yeah. Lasers are so precise <laughs> and not only precise, but uh, very fast. Obviously, they're lasers. So it's if if it's wet, it's just going to do this and heat them up and evaporate them. So theoretically, it should be better than regular windshield wipers, dude. You know, yeah, that's. Right. I, want, hey, I need to see. I need to see a video hey, of this. Speaking of speaking of tech, you guys want to hear something insane? So this was just released. So Israel, right? Uh, they have an AI sniper weapon that they just revealed that they use. So there was a an Iranian nuclear scientist. So you know how they're always trying to prevent Iran from developing nuclear capabilities right because sure know, you know we know yeah, yeah they've said oftentimes they want to wipe israel off the face whatever yeah, so right. there's this like thing right so they assassinated any any iranian nuclear scientists with this ai sniper so it's a sniper that's controlled by ai you want you want to get this how far the, the rifle was from this person how far over a thousand miles thousand, thousand miles over a thousand miles shot a bullet i didn't even know we have a bullet that could travel that far i didn't either what Is that isn't that like a rail gun i don't know isn't that crazy? Let me wow. That because that's a lot. <laughs> I want to make sure I got yeah, that right. Yeah, that sounds pretty impressive. Uh, yeah. it, I mean, it's... it's I feel, I feel like we've a thousand surpassed. yards would be crazy, Sal. Yeah, it would. A thousand huh? yards would be crazy. Let a thousand sure, miles me, is like... Let me make sure I'm all right. It's like shooting someone no. in Florida. No. <laughs> the, no, no, listen. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe the... A thousand the, yards. Yeah. yeah. No, well, Your no, flat the right, earthers like it. Hold yeah, on a yeah. second. The rifle was yeah. operated from a thousand miles away. That's what happened. <laughs> so oh, somebody so a thousand remote. miles away operated the sniper. Oh, uh, okay. Still, yeah. still crazy. Not nearly as crazy as what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, give me a location that's a thousand miles from here. Think about that for a second. That's it so shot a far. bullet from space. <laughs> that's like states <laughs> over. Like that's how far. That's far. Probably up to Washington State or yeah, something yeah. like that. Oh, my bad. <laughs> still crazy. It's just not as crazy as I thought it was. Or British. Yeah. Sorry about that. that. Is it like a uh, like a sniper sn- sniper a sniper, sniper man <laughs> a sniper? Is it a sniper? Uh, that's like, a, that's sniper, a, no like swiping. A, that's a sniper with a knife. Yeah, <laughs> a I got a like a, like an AI person, or is it like a uh, like a no, drone? It's, no, it's like a it's a rifle that's operated uh, from with with AI capabilities. So so it's a computer gun, basically. Oh, but so, a person so, is actually firing. So is the AI it's just, in the it's just bullet using the data too, or is to it give you a, like just. Yeah, like how does this guy? It's just guided from the actual the gun. The, the rifle itself is it aims with AI. Yeah. So you set the target, it aims, fires. So that's my point. So it th- is that mean that somebody else is pulling the trigger? Actually pulling the trigger from far away. So it's remote. 
So they were a thousand miles away. Okay, so back to my original question: Is it somebody? Is it a AI? Is it a machine holding the gun? Is it just a gun laying on the ground? Is it a drone flying? Did according you read the full article? The, according to the article, it's a yeah, machine it's a holding gun. Read, read the first half of the article. Dude, you're worse than the Facebook fact checker. <laughs> I swear to God. No, it's a, it's a. Uh, I'm just trying to picture this thing right now. Yeah, no, uh, no, no. it's it's not as cool as the lasers, though, huh? I mean, is it yeah, like I said? Is it crazy. no? Both these things that you brought today are like over the top crazy. That I want to see. <laughs> I want to see these things. <laughs> It makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was cool. It's like it's like well, it sounds yeah. like a theory article. Well, so speaking of uh, cool stuff, well, I don't know if this is cool. Kind of cool, kind of scary. So, do you guys hear that there's this technology that they're developing? Theory, and it, they say that they can do this. They just got money for it. That they could they could literally modify vegetables like lettuce to where you could eat the lettuce and then get an mRNA based vaccine from the food. <laughs> did you hear about this? No, I didn't. Maybe not. you can look it up, Doug. Uh, so they are literally getting the, the technology exists apparently, and they're going to start maybe pursuing this to where instead of getting a shot, they can modify vegetables it. to produce these mRNA components that you eat, and then it gives you a vaccine. So rather than getting a shot, you eat something, and then you get what? vaccinated. I know. Now people are up in arms. Sneaky. Yeah, people are up in arms because like, oh great, now what? They're going to just make a bunch of vegetables and just oh yeah, of course, vaccinate yeah. everybody all yeah. the time. Super uh, wild. Yeah, that that was a little crazy. Yeah, no, like, are you looking it up right now, Doug? We'll I'm get looking you for one it right way now. Or another. Yeah. yeah, I can we're send. We're gonna fact check out today. God, I'm not sure. even getting fact checked. Like yeah, I know. No, I saw today. that. I actually saw that one with the vegetables. So did you see I'll that? Confirm that. Yeah. You know, speaking of, speaking of money stuff, did you guys see? Okay, so I think it was this. Was it this year when they passed that law for college athletes now can take on money? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, what's it, it called? Was it, NIL. Yeah, or yeah. Like so I believe it was this year, this last year, in the, in the last year that they passed that. So now college athletes can be sponsors of. Do you see our partners, Viore? Did oh, their first uh, first athlete, Olivia like that. Dune. Yeah, the gymnast. I think is what yes, she is. Yeah. yeah, college gymnast. Yeah, really. Curious. So that she's actually the first. I guess since that article we brought it up on the show. I don't know how long. Is she ago. the first or one of the first? No, no, no. Athletes? One, for Viore, she's the first. Oh, okay, she's yeah. not like one of the first. No, Barstool was the one that like jumped on it immediately. Yeah, they were already. Barstool was doing it right out the gates. I know that. So I don't know what, what the market looks like as far as how many people are doing that, but. It, I imagine that's going to explode. Yeah. So this. So explain this to me. Yeah. So before college athletes were not allowed to be uh, if you endorsed. Were, yes. Until you're oh, professional. Yeah. Yes. So they couldn't make so any Nike money. couldn't come and get the number one basketball player that's a sophomore that's right. and pay him you know a million right. dollars a year to plug their and shoes. the argument was it's not fair because these athletes are generating so much money for the colleges they're getting so many views and whatever yeah and that's why can't. it passed it, because they've been trying to get paid forever that was the first was like they should get paid because their likeness is I mean selling jerseys I mean yeah. you have these schools that are popular for a sports program because of the athletes that go through I'm glad it. this is happening because I know the argument before was. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good thing. That the students should focus on their education. But let's be honest. If you're a super popular college athlete and you're getting a degree in business or you could be making millions of dollars of sponsorships, like if I'm their parent, I'm like, yeah, your business degree is not nearly as valuable as this. Yeah. I think this is smart. Well, a lot like. of times the athletes don't really move on into the next level and do well either. Too. That's true. So it's like their moment in the sun. So. Yeah, I don't know. I've I've been kind of back and forth with it because it is like you get a, you do get a free education at a really good college if you get you know an awesome scholarship to them. So that is something. It's like yeah. you can't just downplay that completely. But like I do get the fact that uh, you know the, there is lots of money so to be made it, off their well, jerseys so and likeness. I was, was going to tell you guys, Viore is making such big waves. I think this is my own personal opinion, but now these 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 other big brands are moving into the athleisure wear for men market. So Skechers, and I'm noticing all these brands now are starting to put forth kind of athleisure wear clothing for men where, because Viore has shown that this market exists. Oh, yeah. No, it wasn't a really, I mean, just a decade ago, it wasn't really a market. Yeah, they know? created it. It yeah. wasn't at all. No. Yeah. I mean, and, and you can make the argument that Lulu was one of the first. For yeah, but they women's. catered women, right? Yeah, but even then, their athleisure wear wasn't even a thing. Like no one, no one said athleisure wear just 15 years ago. No, back when we were growing up, if you wore sweats, you look like a bum. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what it was. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah you didn't wear sweats yeah. going out. Or there was Unless like, you're Rocky, you're right? Oh, you're yeah. chasing chickens around. Yeah, let me tell you about Rocky. What <laughs> yeah, a great man. movie. Best love story of all time. Yeah. You interrupted <laughs> me, and I wanted to ask Justin something. We were, we were just talking about I was going to ask you something related to that, and then you you chimed in and took about me to that the, college athletes? Yeah, we had something. Oh, I was going to ask you guys, what do you think about, because um, when you're under 18, 
that money isn't, I mean, that's mom and dad's money still. Yeah. So I wonder if that's going to cause problems uh, with, imagine you have well, that's like. That's not a bad point. Yeah. You have parents who it's are. Like the child actors. Yeah. Their parents just come. Yeah. So I, I imagine you're going to see some stuff like that pop up. That's going to be an issue where you have these, these parents that are like, nah, he's still living under my roof and he's 16. So that's coming to dad. Dad now, takes control. Now, now if this happened to me. Bunch of salivating lawyers ready to go. Totally. Yeah. In trying to imagine, what do they call it? Emancipate themselves from their parents. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, if this was me, I would be, I would be doing it like this. I'd be like, all right, son, here's a deal. You're going to pay me back first for this college that I'm paying for. And then after that, that's your money. I think that's fair, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> don't you think that's fair? Totally. Yeah, well, that's all, I mean, how do you manage that as a, as a mom and dad? I mean, you got a kid, let's say he's a sophomore in, in uh, college and he gets this, you know, crazy ass payout right. like You're that. Still he's still taking the trash out. Yeah, he's still yeah. living at your house. You're yeah. paying for like the twenty four thousand dollar year. My house. I don't care if you're making three million. You're yeah. taking the trash. I'm out. buying my own house, Dad. Yeah. Shit. What am I gonna do now? Yeah. No. No. That's a very. That's a very. very yeah. Good I just point. see. A, I just foresee a lot of issues around. I mean, like just. I mean, we saw what happened with Britney Spears, right? That took forever for her to get her own her own money back. Yeah, <laughs> but I think she's proving that why her parents kept the money. She's a little crazy, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> the first thing she did is that good crazy, huh? Good crazy. In your fantasies, dude. I mean, you have a lot of fantasies about her. You? That's hilarious. <laughs> hey, speaking of kids and setting them up, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine about um, what's that company? We have no affiliation, but and there's m multiple companies. Stockpile. Yeah. That's the one that you and I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't think of a better thing to do with your kids. So basically, there's this company, there's other companies that do this where you can buy fractions of shares or shares as a gift. For other people. So like before, if I wanted to buy Amazon for somebody, I'd have to pay a, one share. It would be like 1800 bucks or whatever. Now you can buy $20 worth yeah. of Amazon. You can make it as a gift. And I've already done this with uh, Aurelius. When he was born and for, when he got baptized, for example, yeah. I said to my family, if you want to get him anything, here's the five companies that you can invest in. Here's the, and, and to figure your kid starts this as a, when they're a baby. All the way till they're eighteen, and for every birthday, people are buying I know. some stock. What a! I can't think of a better thing. I to am do. having a bit of a yeah. challenge with it. The family are the biggest pain in the ass because they they're just like they, everybody yeah, wants they to get all bored with it. Or something. Yeah, well, they, all your you and you'll see. Yeah, you like, just get, they all want to buy them toys. Yeah, you know they want to they want to be the the you know the aunt and the uncle the grandparent whatever that brings the cool toy. They don't want to say, oh, you got stock. You know, that's why I got you. So that's what I'm dealing with. Like, we have this, Katrina has a massive family. I have a pretty good sized family. So I'm like, dude, my son should be rich already by this, by two birthdays, Christmas and stuff like that. <laughs> not so, no, Run not like that numbers. at all. I literally think I have, I've got like, I'd say four or five family members, which that's cool. You know, at least somebody's contributing and helping. Yeah, it's better than nothing. But right. It adds up. Right. But I mean, he's still, he should have been set by now. Instead, I have a bunch of fucking well, toys I throw away well, every dude, six months. Well, dude, this yep. is, so this is what I used to do. Or donate. The, yeah. Sorry, well, this is what I used to me. do, right? Is that because you come home from Christmas, you know this now, and your car's full of just toys. Yeah. And your kid can't even play with them all. Yeah. It's just too much. So what I used to do is I would see which ones they like, which is usually two of them, and then the rest I'd return. And I'd take that money and I'd put it in their bank account. Well, now what I'll do is I'll, find you want to buy him a toy? That's cool. I'll return it. I'll get the money and then I'll buy the shares for my kid. Because the kid don't give it. They don't care. Yeah, yeah. They get the two toys. The rest of them are just... Katrina and I rewrapped them for the next birthday. Clean. That's what we did. Yeah. So, so we just, <laughs> there's so, and there's so many toys and stuff like that. One. We hit them in the, the spare room. And I'm like, you know what? He hasn't seen this. Like, it's been like seven months. Just wrap them. We'll give it to him for Christmas now. Dude. So. <laughs> 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 Come on, man. Yeah, I swear to God, dude. I, like, said, my parents I don't think I Christmas. bought, I, I don't think uh, I got Max anything for uh, his, one or his first Christmas. I don't think I got him anything. Three like gifts to now, my brother's kids. He's just now the age where he even, you know, realizes he's opening yeah. something and getting something. So this year will be like the first year I actually get Dude, when I was a kid, I remember my dad told us this when we got older. He goes, I was so sick and tired of you guys having so much crap that one day I went, we used to have a plate, but there was one room dedicated to like toys and shit. My dad went in there one day with a garbage bag when we weren't home and filled up two garbage bags and threw them away. We never noticed. We never noticed. When yeah. we got older, he told us about this. I'm like, oh my God. So yeah. I do this to my kids. We do that to them all the time. Yeah, yeah. I did that to my daughter. We yeah. took, and what I do is I'll put a bunch of stuff on a garbage bag. I'll, I'll take the garbage donate, bag. Yeah, you take it down the street. Well, first what I do is you I You hide it for like two weeks. I, heard, they I hide it for a week. Yeah, just, if they don't ask anything, then you know they Never. Yeah. They never notice anything. I've already yeah. done that twice now. And I just throw Where's shit away. Where's my Megatron? Dude, <laughs> hey, speaking of kids, I've been, I meant to ask bring this up. One of the last podcasts, you got, because I know. Do both your kids play Roblox or just yours? Yeah, I mine know, do too. Mine my daughter does. Too. She yeah. does too? Yeah. So they see, they got strip clubs on there now. God damn it. Are you serious? Yep. Um, like what? Like little I know cartoon they had, characters? So, so they had like 
concerts and everything inside there. They yeah. had like, I remember they had that Royal Blood. They had some other like cool bands in there, but I had no idea that they were trying to get all. Wait a minute. Why? Is like, this for kids? This is for like, well, yeah. Well, this is what happens when you open it up for, because it, it is, I, and you guys know this better than I do. They can, they can create their own levels and rooms and yeah. write their own code, right? Isn't that right. what's so kind of cool about it that everybody thinks it's so awesome? Well, the hell's making strip clubs? Yeah, they make their own though. games oh, inside the game. Some little dysfunctional kid, bro. No, it's not. Some 40-something year old pretending to yeah, be a kid. Yeah, some that's freaking pedo in there. Or that, you know what I'm saying? 100%. Or it's like a teenage, it's, that's, to me, I, I see most likely teenage boys thinking it's funny to do shit like that yeah. and they can write code now or do whatever what the hell? and they, they create Doug pulled it up there for a second like in Minecraft where you get like one huge it's already in just Doug's like a uh, history, history or something <laughs> hey Doug how come when you pulled it up and said you had credit strip clubs Roblox why did yeah. it pop up right away Doug welcome, buck, yeah. welcome back Doug Eggie. <laughs> yeah welcome, welcome back. back it says <laughs> would you like you, have, you, you might have, also like you this. have a $500 okay. credit <laughs> would you would you, <laughs> would you like to complete your <laughs> Your lap dance that you didn't finish. I well, I scared. I pretty much scared the shit out of my daughter Great. with that game. I sat down with her and I. I said, mean, how do you monitor that? Well, you, you try. Well, I mean, you, they're little boxy characters, so I can't imagine that being very provocative. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I so wow, ooh. look at that appearing on kid-friendly Roblox. What the yeah, hell? Dude, I'm sure they regulate. I hope they regulated that. It's probably such a big. I mean, how do you do it? They're exactly it's so big. It is. I've constantly been, creating more and more. Yeah, look at what the hell. <laughs> Makes me want to beat someone. That's up. why I go every now and then. I'll I'll play whatever game that they're really into. And That's why like, I want to like f yeah, because I just, <laughs> oh I'm curious. Like just yeah. like I'm helping my kids. Yeah, yeah honey. I'm like I'm beating you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys suck at this. Yeah. No. I so I scared the shit out of my daughter because I sat her down <clears throat> and I said, you know that there's weirdos on here pretending to be kids. I know, Papa. I know. They. I said, no, no. You don't understand. They will be friends with you for years. He's like, without, give her oh, yeah, years. Yeah, 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 <laughs> they yeah. will kidnap you. I'll scare the fuck out of her. I <laughs> Cut said, your they, toes off. Yeah. They will yeah. be friends with you for years. <laughs> you think that you're that you know them? Yeah. Oh, I've been playing with this person. Kitty for meow three meow years. fourteen right here. Yeah, and like, I'm like, it's, it's a it's a forty year old dude. with hairy shoulders behind his computer just waiting. <laughs> And she's like, what? Yeah, scared the shit out of me. <laughs> the hairy shoulders. Good dad. That's what it is. I mean, yeah. yeah good dad. You, you want him worried. So <laughs> Anyway, speaking of gross stuff, uh, what's up? What's this article? I read this article. Justin, you brought this up too. Did you hear about the sea snakes trying to bang divers? Yes. What? Yeah. So this is, apparently this has been a thing. Uh, <laughs> lots of divers, uh, divers have, have noticed recently behavior. I think it's because they found themselves amongst like, you know, when animals have their mating season. So uh, I guess they're getting extra aggressive and like wrapping themselves around these divers and, and nibbling on them and, you know, and then biting them and they're venomous and everything. So God, you know what's funny? Okay. So of, of course, sea snakes would mate that way. But for whatever reason, I thought... Thought the sea snake was trying to penetrate, trying to like <laughs> penetrate. It. That's yeah. why. That's why that's I read I the article I meant too. too. That's yeah. what I thought I meant too. Like, but why would they have sex that way? They wouldn't do it that way. What's the title yeah. of somebody who writes articles for a magazine or for a newspaper? What's their title? What author. Is, that? is it just an author? Just a, a regular? writer, author. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think so. Yeah, no. columnist or something. I know. I just think of like imagine like you get that right as your your the editor comes in and be like this is what you're reporting. Hey, we on want today. you to report on the story. Yeah, yeah I feel like that's like a divers. form of punishment, right? That you get some yeah. article like this that you have to write about, right? Venomous. I don't, someone doesn't actually go and seek this information oh, out, do and they? they're yeah. venomous too. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude, it's a problem. So what do you do? You let them mate with you? Like, yeah, you just gotta, <laughs> you gotta sit there till they're done. Uh, oh, wow. like, I don't know. Wow, this is in Australia. Of course, it's Australia, man. They got all kinds of. Dude, they have the the craziest animals down there. Let's Spider, like spiders. And what is the what is the the latest that's going on over there right now? I I brought up the camps last time. I don't know, but the, I had people messaging me and let me know they're okay. So that was good. Yeah, I get. So I have a 50 50 split. I've got some people that are like freaking out over there saying like that's it's crazy over here. Yeah, it's crazy. We we're fighting back and we're doing all that. Like this is unbelievable. Then I have people being like, you know, it's not bad. You know, mm. that, I think it depends on where you live there too. Like the different states, I think are more aggressive than the other yeah. ones. But yeah, it's it's it varies. Like there's some people that are like, man, this is this is like the apocalypse down here. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. yeah. It is interesting. You know, they they did. Um, there was a large study done on mask mandates to see if they actually had an impact. So here's what's interesting. I actually had this conversation. Who was it that I talked to? This uh, I talked to somebody who understands research really well, and they explained this to me. So it's masks definitely can help prevent the spread of viruses. It's not 100%. It's not even 50%, but it does have an impact. However, when you look at real-world studies, and they're now coming out, 
from places that have mask mandates versus those that don't, they don't see a difference. And so I asked this, my friend, I said, how is this possible? Because I'm looking at studies where they actually test masks to see how much virus they prevent from coming out, whatever. And it looks like there's a 10% or 20% reduction. You should be able to see that in the data. And he said, and I thought this was brilliant, what they don't account for is user error and how people you know, use the masks. So mm. if, if masks are used perfectly, then they help. But who the hell uses one perfectly? It's funny because uh, I have a family member that's a nurse, and she told me, yep. nobody wears a mask properly. Like the way you're supposed to touch it and use it once and this and that. She's like, people reuse it all the time. Well, they Courtney, take it off. They touch their face all Courtney's the time. This was point since day one because she got trained into how to properly use an N95 mask. And like you can't, you're not supposed to be even able to smell something. It, you know, and they spray you with all these things and then they, they'll get like pepper spray and stuff to like, you know, make sure that none it. of that, yeah, to test out. And if oh, you, wow. you don't get it, like you're going to, your eyes are going to water and all this like, so if you don't get it right and half the time they don't get it right. So it's just like, it's the, on, and that's the N95 one. I'm going to stop too, there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it's again, <laughs> you have to, no, no, this is good it's, because we do this. silly. We it's see this pageantry. In, we see this in, in uh, health studies too, right? Well, they'll say uh, artificial sweeteners will cause weight loss. Why? Because if you re if you cut your sugar out of your diet and replace it with sucralose, you're cutting your calories. You should lose weight. In the real world, it doesn't work that way. Studies show nobody loses weight. Why? Because what we don't account for is human behavior. People end up eating more food right, right. anyway, so it just doesn't work. Um, this is true for lockdowns too. So they also showed that when they compared states with really strict lockdowns versus ones that didn't, it, it didn't really have that well, big of an so impact. Well, it's so hard to compare those things because you got to think too, there's probably a portion of people that just because of the mandate are, are also going to like revolt and not follow orders either. So, well, you, it's, it's not just that. When you what, do when you do something as 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 an like an area, like try and use that as a way to make base your argument. That's really tough. Well, here's what it was is because I've again I've read articles on this. It, yes, if people stay away from each other, you definitely are going to spread less viruses. The problem is that we don't consider that if there are no lockdown mandates, but people are aware that, uh-oh, there's a spike, people naturally avoid crowded areas and change their behaviors. Mm -hmm. And so they find that because of those natural, uh, those tendencies that people have, that it actually kind of balances out. So this is all the stuff that we don't consider, right? We just look at data. That's the behavioral part of all yeah, this. Yeah, and we say, just do this, <laughs> it'll work. And But we never consider like, well, how are people gonna behave? How are they gonna act? Are they gonna do it right? Those are all things that you know need to be looked at, which yeah. you know very interesting. I yeah. saw someone say that the Taliban was uh, was offering their assistance in hotel or uh, in hospitals. <laughs> what? Was it, yeah, was, okay, that, was that satire? I thought like, it was I've satire seen too. So but much, yeah, like craziness. I thought it was too, but it seemed like a real article. Where in, in Afghanistan? Uh, it, it said, uh, uh, "Let's see if Doug can pull it up." Taliban like um, offers assistance in hospitals. We have COVID see. cure. We cut off your head. Yeah, and then you. Yeah, I've seen I've on. seen that making its round uh, making its rounds right now. <laughs> what the hell? I That's crazy. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, hey, hey, I'm gonna change. Where are we? I'm gonna change subject to something really cool. Did you see the? You guys never check, do you? Do you guys ever check your box from Butcher Box so you can add like the specials? No, no, no. You, you I've been, I've been ordering the same. same thing over. No, I can't yeah. help. I'm that guy. I'm I like, show up. Yes. I, get, I go to a restaurant. I like what I eat. I stick with. No, it. No, no, no. You don't have to change what you have. You could. There's add-ons. So every month they'll have a spe they'll have specials for add-ons. So you yeah. can add something and it doesn't change your box. Okay. So right now they have, and I don't know if it's going to be on when this podcast airs. So you can go check. There's a six plus pound beef brisket already prepared. What? That you can, what? and it's seasoned and prepared, and it's supposed to be really good. And you can add it to your your box, and it's already cooked. So all you have to do is warm it up. You put it in the oven, warm it up, and boom, you have oh, a brisket. I've been, Doug, have you, oh, have wow. you I've been actually- I've to do it on the Traeger. I was going to say, have you done- that's what I forgot, you have one now too. Yeah. That's still, I have yet to do like a 12, 24 hour smoke on like brisket yet. I haven't done mm. that yet. Have you done that yet? Yeah, it wasn't with Butcher Box because Butcher Box doesn't sell the actual brisket. Yeah. But I did buy a grass fed brisket uh, probably two, three years ago and used my old Traeger. Um, How long did you smoke for? I think 12 hours. Did it yeah. come out good? It came out good. Unfortunately, that particular piece of meat is. Uh, was pretty low fat mm. and you need a bit of fat with uh, with a brisket i feel especially yeah. if you're smoking we've it like tried that. to make brisket several times where you slow cook it in the oven and one time it came out good and yeah the, it's tricky it's really hard it's not easy at all and then whenever ever since we went to texas and had brisket <laughs> there 
ruined brisket for me. Absolutely. Everything else is it's terrible. It's art out there. They've, they're, they're not mastered. using grass fed though out there. Oh, know? absolutely they're, not. Yeah, you see the. They're layer. feeding them beer and corn. Yeah, you see the fat on them suckers. <laughs> yeah. It's oh yeah, so good. Hella good. Hella I want to try that though. So I'll definitely. Yeah, jump so on I, that. but it's pre prepared. So I would imagine they well, make it pretty. Good. Just you know, Doug, if that's just like a, a a short time, so I need to know what time I need to get on that. Right yeah, away. I think typically their special offers are limited, so you better get over there. Okay. All right. Hey, one more thing. I want to tell you some crazy good news. This is really exciting for. Family. When you bring good news. Yes, yeah, this Fine. is very good. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's lighten it up. I have a nephew who's got severe food allergies, like really bad. He's had anaphylactic shock a couple times. Mm -hmm. And my sister, just, you know, she's, God bless her. She's always, she's so on top of it, but it's so hard because there's several foods that do this to him. It's been really scary. And a couple times she's had to hit him with the EpiPen because he like, oh, wow. he goes limp and the whole deal, right? Well, anyway, he's now, let's see, how old is he? Uh, 11 or 10, 11. And she's been doing because this is a new strategy now where you 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 give you, you desensitize your body your uh, body's your child's immune system to their their whatever they're allergic to yeah. with microscopic uh, microscopic doses and mm. you gradually increase them. Mm -hmm. He's been doing this for a while, and this is a relatively new thing because in the past they were like stay away from peanuts yeah. or whatever. Now it's like now they tell you to give them like a little bit of peanut butter. Well, like he had to start like super super small, right? Oh, wow. So she took him there to the doctor to do full-on tests. Okay, and now this is scary because he's at the hospital. They're ready with staff because right. he's had where he's almost died before. My sister was like texting us, super worried because if something goes wrong, even with all the medication and all right, the stuff, I can't that imagine they have, the anxiety oh, she must feel like as he could there, still yeah. he could still die. Like he could yeah. have it so bad no matter what they do. Oh my god! So they had everything ready. Hospital ready to go. He's sitting there, and she did this whole photo shoot. It gives me the chills because I looked at the photos. I was, I was, it brought me to tears. And you can see he's super nervous. He's like biting his nails, crossing his legs. He's really scared. And they gave him his first little dose of like peanuts. And they waited, waited, waited. Nothing. Then they gave him a little more. Nothing. Then they gave him a scoop of like an actual scoop of peanut butter. His peanut allergy is gone. Wow. Uh, Gone. He went right afterwards. How, how long to progress? You know, you know, that's a good question wow, I should amazing. ask her, but I think it took a couple of years. Oh, yeah. wow. That long, long time. He Afterwards, he huh. was, they, I mean, my sister was in tears. They were so excited. They went right to the store, bought Reese's Pieces cups and bought like all the foods that he's so scared of Dang. and he's eating them and he's totally fine now. I mean, it was, it's, it's such what a, a trip. such Man, an incredible awesome. story because it was such a big deal for her. So Wow. Wow. That's cool. Hey, real quick. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Look, uh, if you have kids and you listen to the show, you're probably very interested in your child's health. The problem is baby food out there is crap. Most of it's garbage, except for one company, Serenity Kids. They make some of the best, healthiest baby food you'll find anywhere, like grass-fed meats. Uh, they add bone broth. They have grain-free puffs. My kid loves the grain-free puffs. He actually eats them up like crazy. And again, they're healthy, healthy snacks. That's the best part about this company. Go check them out and get 20% off by using the following code or the following URL. It's myserenitykids.com. My, M-Y-S-E-R-E-N-I-T-Y kids.com. So myserenitykids.com. Use the code MP20. So that's MP20 for that discount. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from Hammer Health, who is asking how to slowly increase your metabolism by increasing calories. Oh yeah, that's the, the reverse, what do they call it? Reverse uh, dieting. So here's what's interesting, um, and I want to say this before I get into the, the point that I'm going to make, right? Because we talk all the time about boosting your metabolism through building muscle. And then oftentimes I'll get people who will retort and say, oh, you know, studies show that a pound of muscle only burns this many calories, so it's not as big of an effect as you think. The, here's the interesting thing about metabolism. You have, a, imagine this, uh, think of it this way. You have a range of calories that you can burn with the current lean body mass that you have, right? So this is just for, uh, you know, illustri illustrative uh, sense here. Let's say you, you have 150 pounds of lean body mass. Your potential calorie burn metabolism wise could be between two to 3,000 3, calories, for example, or 2,000 to 2,500 calories with the same lean body mass. Simply eating more, actually gets your body to burn more calories. So does cutting calories actually will slow your metabolism down. When you lift weights and you send this signal to build muscle, even if you don't build muscle, because you're prioritizing or at least sending the signal to build muscle and strength, you will you will move more towards the upper limit of what that calorie burn is. So step number one by boosting your metabolism for boosting your metabolism isn't just to increase your calories, but it's to send a muscle building 
strength building signal. And you don't have to add a lot of muscle to do this. I mean, you can you can add a pound of muscle or two pounds of muscle, but make a big difference. So step number one, if you do this, you have to follow a good workout that's really working and you're seeing strength increases. Now, most people that ask this question are already working out. Right. So the advice I like to give to someone like this is actually to switch your programming up when you decide to do this. I, I've had a lot of success with clients because you're normally training them or they've trained before. Or this person asking this question, I'm guessing is probably already lifting. So instead of just, okay, you've, you're following the same routine or your favorite program or your favorite workout, and then now you go, oh, I heard on Mind Pump, I want to build my metabolism, so I'm going to start increasing my calories, and you just increase your calories, and that's it, and then hopefully you just put on lean body mass. I also, at that same time, want to shift my focus on my training, and, and that can look a lot of different ways. I mean, you can go to a whole different program. You can add in new exercises. You can manipulate your rep ranges. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways for you to manipulate this, but I think... Also, sending a new loud signal, I think it just protects you with any sort of extra calories that you make. It's really hard to be like, okay, well, how many calories do you eat to build just muscle and no fat? Well, it's almost inevitable you're going to put on a little bit of body fat because you're in a calorie surplus right. consistently. So, well, how do I ensure that most of it goes to building muscle? Well, one of the ways I can do that is send a new loud signal to my body that I need to adapt to this new movement or this different way of training. I think is a smart strategy, and it's I've, I always do that. Anytime I'm switching gears on a cut or a bulk, I also like to switch gears on my program. Now, do you guys like target say a specific uh, macronutrient to kind of focus on more to to boost those calories up? Like say more protein, like actively trying to seek more protein in your diet versus like carbohydrates I, or fat. I would recommend clients that, that the protein's the must first that we get, but yeah. I actually don't tell them they have to get if they have if they were going to increase their calories by say. 150 to 200 calories. I don't say, oh, it has to come from from protein. I say, so long as your protein targets are hit, yeah. you can use it however you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some days, if you feel like you want more carbohydrates or more fat, and I think there's value to going on all, all three directions. You I know? agree 100% because if once you hit that target, adding extra protein, it's okay. Your body will turn it into energy. Here's the problem, though, with adding too much protein. It's so satiating that past a certain point, if you're really starting to reverse your, your diet and starting to bump your calories, you'll find that, oh, I can't eat anymore because mm -hmm. protein is so satiating. I've had female yeah. clients tell me that like, you know, I'm reverse dieting and I'm trying to get my metabolism up, but I'm so stuffed. Yeah. And I look at their protein intake and this is not common. This is rare. These are for people that really pay attention. Like, well, your protein's really high. It's going to zap your appetite, which is a good thing if you're trying to cut. Mm -hmm. But when you're trying to reverse out, you know, and trying to go up, uh, maybe not. I would say, you know, as far as how fast to increase your calories, depends on the person, you know, 100 calories to 300 calories is probably the range, I would say. Although I've seen people go up higher than that who have a lot of lean body mass who can get away with adding 500 calories um, and not gaining you yeah, know, too much body. Yeah, if you're lean and big and already muscular yeah. and you're trying to add more, I mean, you could easily go 500 plus yeah. on somebody. But I mean, but. here's the strategy, right? Like, follow a good strength building routine. That's number one. Slowly increase your calories. That's number two. Get good sleep. That's yeah, number three. Yeah. You do those three things, and you should see over time, and some people this happens pretty quickly, you should see your metabolism really start to, to boost. And sometimes you'll get your metabolism. I mean, I've had clients increase their metabolisms by 1,000 calories. Like I'm, I'm, They're literally burning 1,000 more calories a day just sitting there. So huge, uh, very effective strategy. Next question is from Fredrickson855. What do you guys think about complexes when it comes to building muscle? So now let me get this straight. I'm going to ask you, Justin, because yeah. this is kind of like a performance thing. It is. It, 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 now, how many exercises constitutes it a complex? Constitutes a complex? Yeah, that's a good question. I I would say three, but I mean, I, I could be wrong. Um, I mean, look it up, Doug. Yeah, look it up. Because yeah, then it becomes circuit. Because then we, right? just, we just basically stack uh, some of these exercises together to make the make the uh, overall exercise more difficult, obviously. So it's like you're basically supersetting, but it's usually in a way where you have a like one uh, – you either have a barbell, you have dumbbells, you have kettlebells. There's different ways you can do it, but it's not like – you're replacing it. You're trying to use the same equipment uh, to pull off these moves and usually starts with like deadlift, goes into squat, goes into an overhead press, goes into a backloaded squat. Uh, and then they, there's kind of creative variations from there. Yeah. I feel like this is uh, not feel like I, I, the benefit of this really is about 
strength, stamina, strength, endurance. Yeah, it's like work capacity. Do, exactly. Yeah, even better uh, way to say it. Does this contribute to muscle building? Not directly. I don't think it directly it's a great way to build muscle. However, if you improve your work capacity and your capacity to handle higher reps and move from exercise to exercise, could that contribute to building more muscle when you do more traditional type lifting? I'd say yes. I mean, I... Th I Intermittently using this as a tool, sure, I like it. Uh, for using that as your 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 way of training most of the time, terrible idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's if, it, but if building muscle is your goal, right? Yeah, if building muscle or strength, building muscle or strength, it, you're going to be better off with straight sets and long rest periods and one lift. Yeah. Just fl plain and simple. All the research supports that. Does that not mean that you get some benefits from running a complex, a circuit, a superset, a triset, all these different ways of right. combining exercises in a routine? Yeah, there's value to it, but the more and more you keep adding to that, you 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 start to sway over to work capacity capacity, right. endurance, stamina, and that becoming the major adaptation and not building strength and muscle as the number one right. adaptation. Yeah, you know what's funny is that at, Doug's been pulling up articles on complexes. And this is what I this is what I thought. That's why I wanted to um, you know, just confirm. The word complex in our space has been used to replace circuit because circuit sounds like uh you like know cardio. It sounds like aerobic class. Yeah, aer aerobics. Yeah. It doesn't sound tough, right? So what they're doing now is calling it. <laughs> it works on me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Like, like, oh, complex is totally different. Yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to yeah, do yeah, yeah. No, because like he pulled up an article. Here's a here's a nine exercise barbell complex, right? It sounds better than a nine exercise barbell circuit. Yeah. Circuit. circuit training. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think yeah, it's I'm crap. Out. It's yeah. crap for the most part. Intermittently using it. You're short on time one day and you want to do a cool complex yeah. to get your workout in oh, 20 yeah. minutes. Sure, do it. Or Otherwise, do something with kettlebell outside. You know, it's just good to change it up. But yeah, it's totally a novelty. So this is like a novelty workout that you can do every occasionally and and get some benefit from it. But yeah, it's not something you want well, to stick with. This is what uh, CrossFit calls it all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I got this new barbell complex I'm doing that's super yeah. cool. Yeah, it's like part of their lingo. That's yeah, where yeah. it came from. Because otherwise, we would just call it no, shitty it circuit training. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we called it two training. decades ago. They stole shit. Yeah. Yeah. everything just doing some shitty circuit training. That's what you're doing. Trainers. Yes, yeah. thank you. I, the most exercises I think you should combine for, for... Now, forget performance, stamina, work capacity. I think you could put together complexes, but they have to be programmed really well. It's rare that I see a really well-programmed combination of four or more exercises but let's just say your goal is to build muscle the most exercises you probably should combine are two i think a superset you can do that past that it starts to really tap into that cardio component where it becomes very very much about endurance yeah unless that's the goal is like yeah is durability yes and, and you know that's part of the adaptation you're seeking like it's you know it's one of those other tools you can pull out and and go for it and by the way if you're if you're listening and i know i just shit all over complexes and maybe that's the way you train all the time if you're consistent with it you love doing it you're good at your form and technique and it's what keeps you coming back and training all the time I'm like okay that's got value to it mm -hmm. because you like doing it and you have fun with it then by all means go ahead and keep it but if you're going to get a question like this where you ask me straight up is it good for building building muscle or building strength compared to straight sets no no, no. Uh, yeah Next question is from S Powers 28. Do you choose your weight based on RPE or simply aim for whatever you lifted during your last workout? Yeah, I so RPE is what rate rate of perceived exertion. Yeah. Um, you know, and they give it a name or whatever. I I I I move toward more towards that than anything. Why? Because the way that I feel each day can change. And so if I I go into the workout saying I'm going to train at 70% of my one rep max and I feel a particular way that, you know, maybe doesn't back that up, then I'm going to follow how I feel. The only time I like percentages based off of maxes are for specific types of strength athletes like powerlifters, where I think it has more value. But I think for most people, you should go off of your perceived exertion because, you know, 10 reps with 200 pounds may feel very, very intense to you one day and another day it may feel a lot easier i feel like this is just another mm -hmm. example how our the fitness space loves to overcomplicate things totally just, unless you're a, a a strength athlete where you you need to be progressing in strength like week over week or and you, you're and you have a peak day yeah, and whatever. you have a peak and you got to compete and stuff like that like i never measured percentages like this and like took my body to the ultimate peak level the way it looked wise fitness wise like 
I, I just think that the, if someone hears this and they're like, oh, well, where I got to figure out what I need to yeah. put on the bar here and I'm not sure. Or, yeah. I did this last week, so what should I do this week? It's like, whoa, dude. Like, <laughs> How do you feel? Yeah, well, yeah, it's not that It's not that crazy. It's like literally you have a pretty good idea of what you think you could do, right? Okay, let's put that on the bar. Let me know. Do a set. How do you feel? Was that really fucking hard? Was that really easy? Like, where are you at? Should we cut back on some weight because your form was off a little bit? I mean, it's, it's well, literally try, that simple. They think that they're making it easier by like sort of standardizing these things. Yeah. Like, like like simplifying it, well, they made it way more complex. Yeah, like you said, like you could just literally go based off your feel, but you have to do work in order to assess what that feeling is, you know, for that day. So you have to do uh, that. That comes with experience. You know, every time you go to approach weights, mm -hmm. like your body, you you understand that you have different days where you feel stronger, and in different days, and there's multitude of factors that yeah. that contribute to that. So you can't just like standardize that to everybody and be like, oh, well, this is going to be your percentage. Uh, for the day and they've tried this with HRV even and the, the, you know just because the science has helped kind of guide it but it's just not perfect the, the way I always teach clients is like lean towards lighter okay so always put on the bar a little less than what you think you could do for that set because the goal is to be two reps short of failure and if you uh, underestimated so much that when you're you're doing 10 reps and you're at rep 5 and you're like oh shit this is way light I could have put 50 more pounds on this thing slow the reps down Literally just slow. Aim for the intensity you were looking for. Yes. Yeah. So if you were looking for an intensity yep. that would be struggling at eight, nine, and ten to get it done, but you feel like at five, six, this is way too light. I could have put fifty more pounds. Slow the tempo down, dude. Go pe way slower. People need to. There uh, you go. People need to understand that I could, I could make sixty pounds feel like hundred pounds very easily through focus, technique, tempo, and make it just as effective. So that's a that's a great advice. Here's the thing that I think. Uh, is important to communicate to people. It's not just how you feel going into the workout, but how you feel as you're working out. And yeah. I have to say this because yeah. I've had people go into a workout with a particular mentality and then ignore their body the whole workout. Like they, oh, I'm supposed to do eight sets of squats. I feel really good. Yeah, and then looking at the numbers and pushing through. Yeah, and then by set four, they they know like, uh oh, this is too. But they, oh no, I got to do you know more sets. Like you, you can change your mind halfway through. It happens to me all the time in both directions. It's happened to me before where I start a workout feeling like, oh, you know, I'm a little tight. I don't know. And then halfway through, I'm like, no, I'm feeling good. And it happens the other way too, where I start to back off. Like that's the ultimate guide is how you're feeling at any given moment and pay attention to that. And that's what I mean by here's the fitness space overcomplicating stuff and throwing acronyms, thinking that you're simplifying. It's like, dude, none of that shit matters for most of the population. And if you're somebody who really grasps this, I'm not talking to you. Yeah. If you're somebody who loves to calculate all this stuff up, you track all your weights and you're all about increasing your strength and that's all you care yeah. about. But the general population, that's not their main focus. They want to lose some body fat, build a little bit of muscle, be healthy, move better and like getting caught up and hung up on stuff like this. Waste like, of time. Yeah, it's a waste of time for 95% of you. Next question is from Bailey Jordy. Have you tried the supplement Turkesterone? Yeah. I'm sure Sal you know, has. It's, it's, I, of course Sal has. thousand percent Sal I, I hate to say it, but I called this out again. Remember, okay, how long? Okay, so you guys know Ecosterone. Is this a turkey yeah. nut? Okay. Uh, no, no. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? It comes from turkey. Turkey balls? Turkey balls, right? Is this turkey balls? No, yeah. You extract it from it's turkey not, testes? It's not from a turkey. Everybody calm down. All right. You guys have heard me talk about Ecosterone. Yes. I, I brought it up, I don't know, how long we had the podcast? Seven years ago? Yeah. At least, right? So ectosterone is a compound. It's actually an insect. From insects, right? It's an insect yeah. hormone, but it's also found in plants. And the first studies you'll find on ectosterone, and believe me, this is connected to turkesterone, the first studies you'll find that were done on ectosterone were Soviet studies. And the Soviets studied ectosterone. Actually, there's studies from that, from that time where they compared it to Dianabol. They actually compared it to Dianabol. And it was a low dose of Dianabol. Nonetheless, by the way, Dianabol is D-ball. It's a steroid. They did a study. I think it was like eight weeks long. Ectosterone compared to, I think it was 10 milligrams of 15 milligrams a day of D-ball, which is low by bodybuilding standards. But the average person, you give them 15 milligrams of D-ball, are going to feel it. They compared the two. Ectosterone outperformed it in an eight-week study. Yes. Ectosterone also reliably increases the amount of wool that sheep will grow, increases muscle mass in animals when they test animals, so pigs, cows, you give it to sheep, mice. Now, human studies were mixed. Uh, however, again, these, these Soviet studies showed that it worked very well. Now, here's the problem. Finding real ectosterone was really hard to do back in the day. A lot of bullshit 
was out there. But I remember, I've, I've taken ectosterone. I've taken real ectosterone. And let me tell you, it definitely works. You definitely build muscle. Your appetite goes up. A lot more wool. You get... You get <laughs> <laughs> No side of, uh, no, no side <laughs> yeah. effects. No, um, it, it actually it definitely works. It's not forever. I think uh, you'll take it for like oh, is it like Humana Four when we played around with that? Yeah, for a so bit? you'll take it for oh, like sixty right. days, and then that. you're just not doing anything for you anymore. You'll uh, get a libido boost in the beginning, and then it kind of flattens. That's out. That's how I felt about Humana yeah. Four. Was we were all so I excited about messing with that, and I remember like the first month we were all reporting grade seven then like plateau tank and then done yeah yeah, yeah nothing. nothing and then when you go off you actually feel a little bit of a dip off yeah. of the ectosterone now it doesn't interact with hormones doesn't raise testosterone it doesn't interact with the androgen receptors they think it's mediated by the estrogen receptors that's interesting enough turkesterone is also uh a, a similar type of with steroid molecule they're actually steroid molecules uh so it's very similar supposed to be more effective i've never used turkesterone but it's similar to ectosterone. If you get real turkesterone, you, it'll work. You'll definitely notice. But it's going to be about 45 days, 60 days, and then it's not going to work anymore. And it's about time. I was waiting for supplement companies to jump all over this. Because I remember thinking to myself, if I ever start a supplement company, I'm gonna. this is what I'm going to sell. But it, I, apparently it's really hard to find and real expensive. So is this pretty much the same thing then? Is that what you're saying? Turkesterone is supposed to be more effective than ectosterone, but they're very similar chemically and oh, they're in the wow. same category. Um, and you can find, by the way, spinach, sp spinach contains And no side effects. It doesn't aromatize Popeye's or anything like that. Or since day one. Doesn't so here's what's interesting. In the studies that I've read, it has uh, health benefits. So improves liver function, blood sugar numbers, like all that stuff. So now, does that mean that there's no potential, you know, who knows, like bad side effects? No, but the studies seem to be pretty, pretty... Good well, on it. Doesn't like normal testosterone show that if you have low testosterone, if you have low testosterone, and then you you take a yeah, but a this it doesn't affect hormones. So what they used to think was you take this stuff and it raised testosterone, and that's how they promote it. So in the '90s, when I first read about this stuff, I don't remember where I read the first articles, but it might have been Muscle Media 2000. That's a throwback. This the, was a magazine. The back black and white pages. Yeah. So this was, <laughs> this was it was on a tablet. No, this this was this was Muscle back in the media. day when uh, Muscle Media 2000 used to write about like weird shit and black market stuff, and they wrote about ectosterone. I read about it, and I'm like, holy shit, where can I find this? But they used to think that it was a testosterone booster, and it used, that's how they marketed it. Mm. Then they did studies, and they found it doesn't affect testosterone. Interesting. Doesn't raise testosterone. Doesn't lower it. So would that, does this fall under like the SARMs category, or where does it? Move? No, because SARMs attached to the androgen receptor, and this doesn't. Now here's why you have all this renewed interest because for a while people were like this is the next next greatest thing then everybody was like oh this doesn't work because every company that sold ectosterone was selling you bullshit so people mm -hmm. like oh this doesn't mm -hmm. work because they weren't getting real ectosterone here's why there's renewed interest the was it usada is that the organization that tests uh, you know does, yeah, athletes okay true. they came out and said we may we need to ban this uh, from Olympic sports because it works. Mm -hmm. So now everybody's excited and I knew supplement companies would jump on the shit and say, let's do this. Now it does, they, th they think it does work through the estrogen receptor. So will this have potential negative or positive? Who knows? Mm -hmm. M maybe in women, it might have more of a negative effect. I don't know, but does it work? Yes, it does. Does it work as well as eating good and having a you know good what was workout? That no. Deer antler one, like velvet. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that was popular. For yeah, a bit. that's an interesting one too. A lot of anecdotes about that. Yeah. I've never tried it. I heard a lot of people. Oh, I thought about you did it. try that. No, no, I never found deer like a good brand that I really wanted to try, and uh, so I just never. I think gave somebody a shot. sent me some of that stuff I before. Know. You know, you just got me excited. Maybe I'll try some weird shit again. Yeah. yeah. The let's, last the last time I tried petri dish. The last time I tried weird stuff was. Uh, Ants. Remember ground up ants? Yes, uh, yeah, black dude, ant. You that yeah. I had you guys all try that. I forgot about that actually. Just, you you said force that. fed us. I, I, that I stuff, dude. Justin tried it. He smiled. Mm -hmm. was like a little ant wig <laughs> little, stuck in little, his teeth. Little antenna. Yeah. Yeah. It, it did out. nothing. Yeah. It did nothing. I ate yeah. that for no Trash. reason. Yeah. Didn't do shit. Look, if you like our content, uh, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. Head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our guides. We have guides for fat loss, muscle building, performance enhancement. We have guides for personal trainers mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsal and Adam is at mindpumpadam.